Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So as you know, as we're approaching test day, I'm recording this just prior to the October 2023 administration. Uh, Certainly these principles will apply well into the future, but those of you who are testing next week, this is especially applicable to you. We'll be talking about brain dumping and how to make the most of that on test day. But before we do, just a quick reminder, if you're looking for a very robust course to take you through all of the content related to the exam, get you prepared and updated for 2024, then you're going to really enjoy the VIP course. The VIP T course, this is where we go through pretty much everything on the test. We go through all the systems on the exam. We've got loads and loads and loads of pre-recorded content, study sessions. Uh, We tend to to do lots and lots of practice questions together. It's a great way to go through the content in a very robust and systematic way so that you can go through and have a great experience on test day. Plus, it's typically in a smaller group format, so you'll be able to get your questions answered, reach out personally. Uh, You're able to to schedule one-on-one calls with me. It's just a really great experience for getting you ready for test day. So if you're looking for that, be sure to check out the VIPT class. Again, there are group discounts available. If you want to get a, a bunch of your cohort together, we can get you some pretty sweet discounts on our VIPT program. All right, let's go ahead and talk about brain dumping on the exam. So brain dumping, I remember the first time I heard this term, I wasn't quite sure what it referred to, but brain dumping simply refers to using the scratch pad on test day in order to jot down a few notes, acronyms, make some calculations, uh, that type of a thing so that on as you're going through the exam, you don't have to worry about forgetting the things that you have scratched down on your scratch pad. So brain dumping is simply, you walk into the test, you can't bring any external material, just what's in your head, and you sit down at the test at the test seat, you're sitting down actually at your desk, and you begin writing some of the things that you want to make sure that you don't forget or you want to keep straight during the exam. Now, I'll mention again, but the irony of the brain dump is the more you prepare ahead of time what you'll put on the brain dump, the less likely you'll actually need it. This is simply because you have prepared it, you have it clearly in your mind, so that as you sit down in the test seat, you won't actually need it. And this was my personal test experience that I did use the scratch pad. I think I wrote down the mnemonics for the cranial nerves, wrote down a few other things. Uh, But generally speaking, I did not end up using them because I had a clear vision or understanding of what it was that we were, what it was that I had written down on the test sheet anyway. Uh, But that being said, it can be helpful, especially from a psychological standpoint, help you know that you won't forget this. You can feel a little little bit comforted knowing that these are items that you will not be missing on test day. So the way it works is during COVID, they used disposable pieces of paper and pen. Uh, They do tend to opt towards and what they reverted back to is a dry erase paper. So essentially it's a laminated piece of paper and they give you a dry erase marker and so your job is then to, to, well, I guess you can use it as you wish. They give you a couple of sheets. If you need more sheets, they will give you more. You just have to raise your hand and get a proctor to bring you more brain dump sheets. Now, part of the reason for the dry erase pad is so that it's, it, it would be difficult to get it out or that it, w- it would not be a permanent record of what was actually on the test. So again, to prevent cheating. Uh, but that being said, the dry erase pad is great because you can easily erase it. You can make just a couple little calculations if you need to do some math on the test. All that to say that it is, it is, it's for your benefit. Now, remember, again, you can't bring any outside material into the test with you. Uh, but it should be content you should have you know, fairly well prepared in your mind what you will put on your brain dump. So things that could go well on this would be like acronyms, mnemonics, uh, just maybe a quick table. Like for instance, just a couple examples here, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, amyotropic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease. This is where you get uh, lots of sclera built up in the central nervous system. This is the, maybe a, a unique condition where you get lower motor neuron and upper motor neuron symptoms. So therefore, this would be a quick note you'd put on your, your cheat sheet is ALS equals lower motor neuron plus upper motor neuron symptoms. So this means you could have hyporeflexivity and hypotonia as well as in the in the presence of hyperreflexivity, hyperreflexia and hypertonia or a positive Babinski test. All of that to say that you could have both or a mixed bag of symptoms, upper versus lower motor neuron symptoms. Uh, so that would be an example of something you could very quickly jot down. And then you'd always remember that anytime you see a question about ALS, you look for upper and lower motor neuron symptoms. Another one, a little uh, mnemonic device would be see my pons med you. 
So it's a kind of an interesting spelling. You have to do C E M I P O N S M E D U, medu. So this is indicating the the origins of the cranial nerves. So C E would be from the cerebrum. You get the first two cranial nerves. M I for the midbrain. You get the next two. So cranial nerves three and four. P O N S. You get five, six, seven, eight. So there's there are four letters in P O N S. So therefore, the next four cranial nerves come from the pons, and then the last four. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 come from the medulla oblongata. And so therefore, M-E-D-U or medu becomes your little mnemonic device to remember that there are four cranial nerves coming from the medulla. So that's just an example of a mnemonic device that you could very quickly jot down, see my pons medu. Again, a funny spelling there, C-E-M-I-P-O-N-S-M-E-D-U. And then another one, this would be just maybe a quick little table or a little device to remember the difference between NMES so neuromuscular electrical stimulation comparatively to or compared to transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation or some type of sensory modality. So NMES tends to have a longer duration, so usually greater than 100 microseconds and a lower frequency of 30 to 80 hertz, whereas TENS typically has the reverse. You typically have a shorter duration and a higher frequency, so higher, a frequency above 100 hertz. So that could be one way to just quickly write down and remember the difference between the parameters for NMES and TENS. So these are all ideas and, and things you could possibly put on your brain dump. Now, the great news is that I'll be running, personally running a brain dump session. This is for the October 2023 administration. We'll be doing that on Monday, October 23rd at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. And so if you want to get a link to that, I'll have that in the description for the show notes here, as well as if you want to grab that, uh, another easy way to get that is go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. I've got the link there that'll come to you via email. So you'll be able to participate in this exclusive brain dump session where we'll go over a lot of mnemonic devices, maybe just some last minute tips and tricks for test day, really a lot of navigation tips for helping you find the correct answer on test day. I think you'll really enjoy that. Again, it's totally free. It's our brain dumping session. We like to do this before every test date administration. And this one will be Monday, October 23rd at 3 p.m. Eastern. So that's Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern. That'll be test week is next week. So as I'm recording this test week is next week. So for October uh, 24th and 25th, or sorry, 25th, 26th. In any case, we'll do that the Monday of test week is when we're doing the brain dump session. So if you want to participate in that, go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. You'll be able to find that link be able to easily join us. The recording will be made available to those of you who are participants in our crash course or VIP course or premium course. You'll have access to all of that if you want the recorded version as well. Otherwise, be sure to be there at 3 p.m. on October 23rd. Again, the best way to find that is ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you'll be able to find the link and join us for our, well, not a crash course. This is the very tail end of our crash course, our brain dump session for the NPTE. Uh, so there you go. Other tips and tricks about brain dumping is that uh, just of note, you won't be able to begin writing on your brain dump until you're actually at your first question. Now, I get questions all the time is when do you start writing on that? Now, uh, I think technically you're not supposed to begin until you have completed the exam tutorial. So the tutorial that shows you how to click a mouse and advance through the questions. Once you have finished that and you are on to the very first question where it's asking you an actual question, at that point, you may begin writing on your brain dump. And again, these should be very brief. Some people ask me, how much time should I spend on the brain dump? And I say five minutes or less, it should be very, very quick. I mean, five minutes would be really pushing it because you're spending time away from your test questions on this brain dump. It should not be a lengthy process. It should be something you have in mind, what you'll put, put beforehand so that you can do it very quickly on test day. Uh, so that's one thing about the brain dump. Uh, you will have to do math on the test. I get this question all the time. Do I have to do math on the test? Uh, yes. So a good example of that would be like the ankle brachial index. Uh, you'll, you'll be calculating the ankle brachial index. Maybe you'll be calculating some heart rate, some rate pressure products. Uh, es essentially, it is straight up multiplication or, or division, just to what you'd say, your, your basic mathematical skill. So you will be required to do that. And the brain dump is a great way to, to do that, or the brain dump is a great place, I guess. What I'm saying is that scratch pad, that is what it's there for. So you can double check yourself, make sure that you're actually doing the division correctly, the multiplication correctly, the addition correctly. You want to make sure that you're doing all of that correctly. So you don't get the wrong answer because the way they'll ask the question is, which of the following ABIs or what ABI is represented by these patient data? 
And you have to say, all right, so I've got the data, I've got the systolic blood pressure for the ankle, the systolic blood pressure for the, for the arm, and I have to find that ratio between the ankle and the brachial systolic blood pressures. And so therefore you have to make that calculation of ankle divided by brachial. Uh, that's just one example of doing that. But in any case, you do need to make sure you're ready for, for uh, mathematical calculations. You need to be sure to be ready to have some quick acronyms or mnemonic devices you could put there. So maybe a quick table or an image, some drawing, something to help you remember things for test day. All right, so with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion then for today. Be sure to join us again for that podcast, well, for the podcast, for the brain dumping session that's on Monday the 23rd. Uh, you can find that, the easiest way to find that is ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you can get the email invitation for our session. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next podcast episode. If you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a five-star review. It really helps on Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. Stay safe, have a fabulous, have a fabulous weekend and study time. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.